All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Hope everybody's doing wonderful. This is going to be an audio only, audio only uh, Bible study. Uh, we are away at conference, as many of you may know, and so we but we did want to bring you something from the Word of the Lord um, uh, this evening. I want to look at Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. I remember, I shared with you before through the years that we tend to read a, a chapter of Proverbs according to the date, and so with today being the fourth. Uh, uh, but this particular day, I want to bring to you Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs is written by the King Solomon. It was uh, instructions that he was passing on to his family and really to the believer in Christ. And so we take God's word and we, we study it and we learn of it and we allow it to be part of us. And, and, and Proverbs is an excellent book. It's almost like uh, little, little nuggets every day that you can read. Uh, little words of wisdom from one considered one of the wisest men that ever lived. And so uh, uh, I share with him, I coin kind of the phrase, a proverb a day keeps the devil at bay. You want to keep the devil at bay in your life? Uh, we encourage you to read a proverb every day. So let's begin. Proverbs chapter 4 we'll look at. I'm just going to go through for a few minutes and then uh, we'll be on our way. So the Bible tells us here in verse 1, he says, Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. And I shared with you before how that he was writing to his family. He was writing to his own uh, sons and, and really to daughters as well. Uh, we continue to pass on them as well. I remember I shared with you uh, when I went to college, regular college, secular college, my mom had given me this Bible and uh, she encouraged me to read the Proverbs. And I think even before, even before that, leading up to my teen years, uh, they encourage me to read the Proverbs. And so it, it brings knowledge. And so we attend to understanding of not only just reading the Bible, but we want to understand the word of God uh, and take heed to godly parents, take heed to godly parents. And we learn from the good, bad, and the ugly. Whoever your parents may be, learn from that. Learn what to do and what not to do. And we pray to the parents today that we will set the example, have set the example. And, and those of you raising younger children, have set the example and studying and understanding the word of God and to really know the true wisdom in life is to follow Christ. The Bible says, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. And so uh, he's really telling them, this is not to hurt you. Don't push it away. Don't reject the word of God. Don't reject my instructions. Thank God for those that give us instructions uh, that will help us along the way. And so we should not forsake it. We should receive of it. Especially God's word, we should receive over. He says, "For I was my father's son, tender and only be loved in the sight of my mother." And so He says, "He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep thy my commandments, and live." And you got to realize his father was David, so David was a follower of Christ. David was a, a the Lord. He loved the Lord. He loved God. He he, he declared the Lord is his shepherd, and so he desired and yearned to to be with God, and so. The Bible says he taught him. He taught him the best that he could. He taught him as much as he could. Actually, they did what they could in the Old Testament. Uh, it's even before the empowerment and the of the Holy Spirit and without the uh, blood cleansing power of the of of Christ. And so, a lot of uh, things that David and really the Old Testament saints had done uh, were again just majority fleshly and and because they didn't, the Holy Spirit wasn't sent down like it was in the New Testament. So they did but the best they could. but And they did the best that they could to uh, lead and, and guide the children, lead and guide the kingdoms, lead and guide uh, and live in the society they lived in uh, as holy unto the Lord as possible. And so the Bible says, he told them, he said, get wisdom. Learn. Don't walk around being foolish. Learn doing foolish things, but learn what's right. Learn of God. Learn, get education. Uh, get a skill. Learn, and it's a lot of aspects of our life. But get wisdom, get understanding, and really just to apply it as well. Not just to uh, read it on paper, not even just not even to know it, but to apply it as well. To apply it and forget it not. Decline uh, from the words of my mouth. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. And so he says, take this word, hide it in your heart, live by it daily. Let it be a part of you. The Bible says, forsake her not. 
forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. The word of God is like a life lifesaver. It really is. It's a preserver. It will keep you afloat. It keeps you alive in, in the cold, cold, dangerous waters of life, uh, the, the, the treacherous waters of life. It will preserve you. It will keep you throughout the day. When, when things dry up, it will keep you. It preserves life. He says, love her, and she shall keep thee. So we fall in love with the Lord, fall in love with Jesus, fall in love with his word, fall in love with serving him. Love, love, love the uh, God of heaven today with all of thine heart. The Bible goes on and says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom, using wisdom as well. The Bible says be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. And so wisdom is key. Jesus was very wise how he dealt with people, how he dealt with issues, how he dealt and maneuvered in life. He said with Solomon, being king, he, he had to have wisdom. He had to make uh, tough decisions. And sometimes I use wisdom in not saying anything. And so wisdom, wisdom is wise. Again, navigating and using it properly, using your knowledge properly to, to, to uh, analyze and begin to say, will this help or will it hurt? Uh, Jesus told him, he said, I can tell you a whole lot of stuff. He says, but it's not wise for me to do that. We can say a whole lot of things, but it's not always wise. And so we must use wisdom. We can do, get involved in a lot of things, but it's not always wise. And so wisdom is the principal thing. How do we apply the things that we know? Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Get all understanding. The Bible tells us, uh, get what, what, wisdom is the beginning of, of, of serving God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom as well. And so you fear God more than you fear man. You fear the things and the consequences that life has. And so we want to make sure that, that we uh, be wise uh, men and women by serving the Lord as well. He says, get it, get understanding, get all that getting, get understanding and all you're getting. Learn the word, get in the word, get, get in the relationship with God in order, get it in order today. The Bible says exalt her. It's talking about wisdom, the wisdom of God. Exalt it, make that primary and first and foremost in your life. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. God blesses uh, uh, because of your f uh, faithfulness. God blesses because of your uh, desire to love him and serve him. God will take what you have and absolutely promote that thing. And as you, uh, 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 as you do that, he will promote you. He will lift you up. He will bless you beyond measure to exceed and abundant above all we can ask for things. And so promote, he, God will promote it. God will bless it. God will honor as you may honor him and his word and the things of the kingdom of God. He will bless you as well. She says, she shall bring thee honor. And, and, and when thou embraces her, so you must embrace it. You've got to embrace God. You've got to embrace the things of God. Embrace worship and embrace the Bible. Embrace uh, giving. Uh, tithe and offering. Embrace uh, the changes that God asks of us to make. Embrace it. The preaching, the teachings. Embrace it. It will bless you along the way. The Bible says she shall give uh, to the to thine head an ornament of grace. An ornament of grace is something special about a, fo a true follower of Christ. There's, a, there's an ornament of grace upon that person's life. A crown of glory, the Bible says, she shall deliver to thee. Let's go to verse 10. The Bible says, Hear, O my son, receive my sayings. And he says, And I, thy life shall be many. And so as we receive the word of God and we follow God and live for Christ and endeavor to live for him, God will keep you every day. It'll keep you out of a whole lot of trouble. It'll keep you off the streets from really uh, many lose their life and trying to live a street life. It will absolutely cut your life short before long. And think about it, how the, God will order your steps uh, to, to where, again, <clears throat> he, he, he gives us long life. And now we know, again, some folks through sickness and disease, uh, again, uh, lives are shorter. Through accidents, lives cut short. But primarily, again, living a life for God, he will preserve thee. And you should have many years of joy and peace and happiness. The Bible says in verse 11, he have taught thee in, in the ways of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. This is where it's at. Serving God, living for God, the word of God. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not real. Don't let anyone discourage you from reading and applying it and living it. Uh, again, we must take it and it is the right way. Jesus is what's, what's right. Jesus is still in style. Jesus is still the man. The Lord God, serving the Lord, being filled with the Holy Ghost, being a true believer in Christ. As we say, holiness is still in style. It is the right path tonight. The Bible says, when thou goest, thy steps shall 
be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Verse 12, because you're walking in wisdom, you, you, you're applying and you're listening to the voice of God. You're listening to what he's telling you to do. He's our orchestrator. He's our, he, he's the one that guides our steps. <clears throat> he won't lead us astray tonight. And so he says, you will not stumble. God will not lead us down a path that will there to hurt us. God will not lead us down a path that will destroy us. God knows as we follow him, listening to the voice of God, not doing our own thing, not walking in our own wisdom and our own uh, uh, consent, conceit ways. But he says here today, we must, we must humbly walk before him. He says we should not stumble. There are a lot of things that will try to trip you up, tangle you up, mess you up. But as we follow it and, and watch the work of God, and don't be don't be uh, foolish towards the things of the devil either. You gotta really analyze and pray through, and don't be deceived by the enemy of your soul because it will absolutely destroy you. And so, <clears throat> but God, as we follow Christ, we will not stumble. The Bible says, "Take take fast hold of instruction." So, be quick to grab it, be quick to receive it, be quick to receive the word and come to service, hear the word of God preach and talk. Be quick to receive it. Don't reject it. Don't reject it. We wouldn't give anything that was there to hurt you. We wouldn't give anything that, that is not, not good for our soul. God didn't give us anything in his word that will, is there to hurt us. We must be, and we must receive it. Don't delay. Don't delay. The longer we delay, the longer, uh, again, um, it keeps us from receiving that true blessing. The Bible says, let, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter in, into the wicked. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And he says, go not in the way of evil men. Go not in the way of evil men. And so through instructions, God tells us, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, follow me. Stay away from this. Stay away from that. And really, as we walk in wisdom, you think about it. You know what? Is it worth me going to jail for this? Is it worth me uh, uh, losing my <clears throat> family for this? Is it worth me, uh, again, having to go through something down the line because I did not use wisdom? Is it worth me uh, losing it all, ruining my marriage, or whatever the case may be? For, for doing something <clears throat> that was not wise. The Bible says avoid it, the things of evil. Avoid it. Avoid people that are evil. Avoid people that are trying to pull you away from God. Avoid people that will cause division. Avoid people that will do things that will cause you to stumble as well. Avoid people. Avoid things. Avoid uh, 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 programs and music. Avoid things that will hinder the soul, that are not good for the soul. Avoid things of appearances of evil, the Bible says as well. We must avoid it. The Bible says avoid it and pass not by it. Don't even get close to it. Don't even get close to it. Stay away from it. Some friends I had to leave behind. <clears throat> love my friends. Love some family. But, hey, we, we don't hang like that no more. Why? Because, again, it was things that were going to be cru critical to my soul. Again, if I, you hang around horse thieves long enough, you're going to turn into a horse thief. If you hang around drinkers long enough, you're going to eventually take a sip. If you're not strong, if you hang around druggies, you're going to end up getting back involved in that mess. You hang around men and chase after the women. Eventually, you're going to be in environments where oh, something or enticing may be there. You hang around uh, folks who don't have successful marriages. Again, eventually, you will possibly uh, destroy your marriage as well. On and on and on, you hang around people who are lazy or whatever the case may be, are not go-getters. Uh, can eventually, uh, schemers and scammers, it'll eventually rub off on you as well if you're not careful. <clears throat> if you're not there to, to help try to change them, uh, they'll change you just uh, sometimes by association or by the mindset. Uh, people who have uh, negative attitudes, eventually it can rub off on you. So the Bible says we must avoid these things. He says they, fall, they sleep not except they have done mischief. Some are very restless. Nonetheless, they can go do some dirt. Not unless they uh, are able to pull someone else down along with them. They sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to fall. That's very sad. Very sad. Very sad to state. And think about whether that's just how the devil is. <clears throat> He's going to continue to work and work and work until he has his way. Until he has his way. The Bible says, and they shall eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. Can you think about that? They even drink the wine of violence, not just the wine itself or the drink itself, but they, they consume, consume hatred and bitterness and, and anger and hold up all these different things in their hearts and their souls. The Bible says they eat the bread of wickedness. What can we do today? Scamming, scheming, plot to, to get over on people. And there are people, scammers out there in the world, people 
who call you get phone calls all the time from scammers that try to win the out of your money or you get emails and junk mail all these different things people are daily dating some type of scam or some type of scheme trying to weasel you out of your money weasel you out of <clears throat> things weasel you out of you could be imagined whatever and so we must not be ignorant of the devil's devices the bible says in verse 18 Proverbs, we said in the book of Proverbs 4, 18, the Bible says, and the, and the path of the just is as a shining light, shining more and more until the perfect day. And so we must get brighter. It's letting us know, let's continue to get better every day, get brighter every day, get wiser every day, every day grow in Christ, every day grow closer to God. So where when we stand before him, we'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Every day we should try to get better, not go backwards, but to go forward. <clears throat> forward in Christ, excuse me, forward in the Lord to get better in his way. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what uh, they stumble. So again, they, the, the devil will have people so blinded to where they cannot even see it themselves. Cannot see even their own misery. Cannot even see their own faults and failures. To be every, uh, again, And so because of darkness, they sit in darkness and naturally the enemy will have them all messed up. And they, and they even don't even know that they need help. Don't even know that they need to repent and turn to God. The devil will have people thinking there's nothing wrong with sin. There's nothing wrong with their lifestyle that's against God. And so we must, we must, we must avoid and stay out of darkness and come to the light. The Bible says, my son, attend to my words. Clang to thine ear unto my saying. So again, pay attention and apply it. Apply it, apply it. He says, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So again, we read our Bibles every day. Read something every day. Pray to God every day. Keep God on the forefront of your mind. And again, the Jewish, they, they were told to, children of Israel, they were told to put the, on the frontlets of their foreheads uh, some scriptures and some verses. You may see them uh, with boxes on their forehead. The scripture, some type of scripture or some type of verse, especially during the times of their holy days, is there to what? Keep it on the forefront of their mind. And so really, you should stay and let the word of God. That's why David said, hide it in my heart. Let me hide this word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. He said, for they shall, <coughs> excuse me, they are life unto those that find them. The word of God is life. Jesus is life. Life to the soul and health to all their flesh. The word of God, the living word of God, the word of God is a spirit. And again, we say we must worship in spirit and truth. And it, it will help you overcome your flesh as well. It helps you overcome your flesh. He says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. So keep your heart. That's your lifeline. Keep your mind and your soul. Keep it in Christ. Keep it in the things of God. He said, out of it is your source. Out of it is your strength. Keep your mind upon the Lord. Guard your heart. Guard your heart from the devil. Guard your heart from sin. Guard your heart from wicked people. Guard your heart from things that are not of him. You must walk with the armor of God every day. Keep your heart guarded because that's where your blessings are coming from. God will bless the heart as you keep your heart. Put away from thee a froward mouth, a froward, a deceitful mouth. Don't be a liar in deception. <clears throat> and the Bible says, but verse lips, put it far from thee. Put it far from thee. He says, let thine eye look right on. He says, let thy eyelids look straight before thee. So keep your eyes on the path, that straight and narrow way. The Bible says, broad is the gate, leads to destruction, but narrows that way. Narrows that way to lead it to life everlasting. So you keep your eyes on Jesus. Focus on the Lord. Focus on doing what you have to do, what we have to do, to be pleased unto his, unto his ways. That we can eventually make it into that great city. That straight path. He told him, don't look to the right or to the left. But keep your eyes on him. Number 26 says, ponder thy path. Let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Remove thy foot from evil. And throughout the word of God, you must stay locked in on Christ. Stay, Keep your heart and mind stayed upon him. God bless our prayer. We'll see you soon. See the prayer as we're away here. But uh, we want to give you the audio a day. And as we say, a proverb a day, but keep the devil at base. It's Proverbs chapter 4. Go back and read him. 
And devil try to read some Proverbs at least once a day, at least something. It'll be a blessing to the soul. We look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.